Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have an episode of a perfumer's portfolio. And, um, you know, I've been doing these episodes for a while. And the whole point of doing these was to give credit to the men and women who make the perfumes behind the brands, who sometimes stay in the shadows. You know, they're like the quiet little mice that operate at night. No one knows that uh, who they are. Well, not no one, but most of the general public doesn't know who they are, what they've done. All they know is they're buying a fragrance brand. They think it's a Tom Ford. They think Tom Ford makes the fragrance. They don't really understand the inner workings of the industry. So this episode series, if you want to call it that, is really made with the intention of, you know, highlighting some of the uh, perfumers and, and giving them credit. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's a job like anything else, but it's a very creative job and it is a job that sometimes is, um, very unloving as you will see with these two folks. This is going to be a dual episode and there's a lot of special things going on with this episode. Um, number one, because both of these people, both of these gentlemen, uh, are disciples of the great Pierre Bourdon, who is one of the greatest perfumers of all time. Uh, and he himself is a disciple of one of the greatest perfumers of all time in Edmund Rudnitska. So Rudnitska uh, was nice enough to, was well, he saw it as his civic duty to really pass along the information to Pierre Bourdon uh, and train him in the art of perfume making, teaching him the tricks uh, and then Pierre Bourdon did the exact same thing. He held absolutely nothing back, he said, when he taught Julian Rasconet and Jean-Christophe Herrault. And, um, you know, there's a book that came out about uh, one of the houses that's going to be highlighted in this video. It's The book is called The Ghost Perfumer. And we know that Pierre Bourdon was the ghost perfumer for many of Creed's scents in the 80s and 90s and maybe even into the early 2000s. Uh, so like, for example, he created Green Irish Tweed from in, in 1985. Uh, he created Arolfa in the early 90s. Um, you know, there are a lot of Creed fragrances that are now being attributed to Pierre Bourdon. And he passed that on to his, you know, in his tutelage to his um, disciples, uh, Julian Rasconet and Jean-Christophe Herrault. So that's why this episode is interesting to me. I don't have a whole lot of fragrances. It's more the story to me, because if there's any two gentlemen that deserve to be highlighted in this way, it's these two guys, because they have been in the background on two of my favorite creeds of all time. Um... And, you know, one of them is, um, let's just say controversial, uh, just saying the, the name itself of the fragrance either makes people go, ugh, or, you know, it makes the newcomer's ears perk up and ask what batch it is and ask if you get compliments on it. Um, but before we jump into these two, um, perfumers and what they have created in my collection, uh, I am going to do... Scent of the day, like I always do. Actually, I'm going to do a fresh spray, too, because it's been a while. Um, oh, wow. I love this fragrance. Um, this is a fragrance from Roja Dove, and I really needed to wear something special today. I got some bad news. Um, not completely unexpected, but uh, still, bad news, and I needed to wear something special. So I went for Roja's Fetish. Um... The bad news is that the um, parcel that Rich Mitch sent from to me uh, from England was discovered and destroyed by the Royal Majesty's mail servants. Uh, so I'm a little bit upset. I may not seem it, but uh, it, and it's completely my fault. I take 100% responsibility. I don't blame Rich at all, uh, but uh, it, it does sting a little bit losing three valuable fragrances, two long uh, discontinued, impossible to find. Uh, don't really care about the money as much as thinking of the juice being destroyed by the male, uh, people in England. Um, it's a day of mourning in the Ramsey household. Let's put it that way. Um, 
And so I wanted to do a special video for you guys and wear a special fragrance. And if you guys are familiar with Roja the brand, that is another brand that is very controversial. Fetish is um, Roja's interpretation of Bellamy. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, he is also credited as the perfumer for Pure Distance M, which I personally like better than Fetish. Uh, although, you know, as I've worn Fetish more, I mean, look at the sheen. Um, as I've worn Fetish more, I've really grown to uh, appreciate it, you know. Um, it does things a little bit different. It, it opens up kind of citrusy and you get this fig note, but that's just window dressing. What it really is about is there's this LME incense um, accord that mixes with leather. And one of my subscribers, Al, says that uh, this reminds him of, of his days when he was a good uh, Catholic uh, choir boy. Uh, the incense. And I do get incense. There's definitely incense in this. And now that I'm paying attention to it, I get it even more. It's almost like it's more uh, about the incense and the, you know, woods than it is that leather note, um, which the leather is definitely there. Don't, don't mistake that. It's a, it's a take on Bellamy. The card the spicy cardamom and all that stuff. It's a, there's absolutely no doubt. Uh, but it's rosied. He rosied it up. I've said that before. There's really no other way to say it. It's rosied up. Is it worth $500 for 50 ml? Uh, that you're going to have to answer for yourself. Will I buy another bottle when this is gone? No, absolutely not. But I will enjoy it while I have it. And I am enjoying it today. Uh, and it does last all day. This is like a 10 hour dry down and it's pumping hard. Um, so that is my scent of the day. So let's talk about these two gentlemen. Let's start with Julian Raskinet. Um, and I'll read you a little blurb from Fragrantica. It says, among our five senses, it seems that smell has a direct connotation with memories and emotion. Julian believes that our olfactive memory is the strongest. When I think of my childhood memories, the smell come first associated with the feeling I had. Then I see the images and eventually hear a sound or music, he says. For Julian, our nose is always in alert, even when we don't pay attention. It prints sensations in the deepest parts of our brains. Julian Raskinet realized quite late, and thanks to the intuition of the famous perfumer Pierre Bourdon, that he was destined to creating perfumes. Since a very early age, Julian found in creative arts a way of communicating his feelings and thoughts. He loved to paint, to draw, to design, and create costumes for theater and puppets. But it was only after graduating from business school that he discovered what would become his passion and profession. When Pierre Bourdon met Julian, he instinctively discerned his sensibility and his potential to become a perfumer. He offered Julian to become a mas his master. During three years of intensive training program, Pierre shared with him his creation philosophy, his techniques, his passion. The encounter with Pierre Bourdon turned Julian's life upside down. Julian also had the chance to work with Christine Nagel for two years before demonstrating his entrepreneurial spirit by creating his own perfume company. For four years, Julian has been creating independently for various international brands. The aim of creation is to cause an emotion, says Julian. To achieve this goal, he likes to bring back personal olfactive memories or to create a story he would carefully translate into notes. His creations can be very figurative or very abstract, but they will always have the ambition to touch. Julian's inspiration always comes from an encounter. Whether it is a person, a song, a sentence, in a book, or a place from those encounters, Julian extracts sens sensations such as texture, color, raw material, that will become the base of the story he has been creating in his mind. I always take notes when I am inspired by something, just like an author taking notes on his everyday life in order to use them in his next script, he declares. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with a new idea I just dreamed about. When this happens, I feel like rushing to the lab and creating it right away. I knew I was moving into a region with a very rich perfume history, even more ancient than the one in the French one. But if I had to be honest, I did not expect to fall so much in love with the region's unique perfumery. 
As soon as Julianne set in, in the plane, he got stroke, uh, he got stroke by unmistakable trails, incense, rich, impactful, distinctive, far from Dubai. He could already smell the beautiful uh, beauty of the Middle East and the call of his new life. So they're referencing Julian Raskinet's new work now, probably with uh, Amouage. He did create a couple of um, Amouage scents. Uh, he made Enclave, which I'm not the biggest fan of. And he did a couple of those 3 or 5 ml Atars that sell for like $700 or something ridiculous. Uh, not a big fan of where the house of Amouage is going, in case you haven't noticed. He also did Tabac Rose for BDK Parfums, which I've never smelled. Um, he did Costume National 1 in 2019 and Secret Woods by Costume National last year in 2021, which I've never smelled. I used to have a bottle of Aberdeen Lavender, and I gave it to my mother, and I wish I wouldn't have because I want it again. Um, see, no good deed goes unpunished. And um, he did, starting in 2011 in my collection, there's only a couple of them, but they're absolute bangers. And the first one is one of my favorite fragrances, one of my favorite Creed fragrances uh, of all time. And that is Royal Oud. Now, this is the second bottle for me, or flacon, as they say. Uh, the first one was a... 100 ml bottle that I went through the entire thing, used it all, and um, and then I got this. Uh, and actually, wait, that's not correct. It's not a bottle. It was a flacon. It was a um, 250 ml flacon that I went through the entire thing on. I still have it somewhere. There's a teeny bit left, and then I got the 500 ml. I, I cannot be without this scent. Um, this is a 20... 16 batch, if you can see right now, 16L01. Anything 2016 or earlier, between 2011 and 2016, those are the golden batches. Once you hit 2017, 18, 19, 20, you're playing with fire a little bit, in my opinion. Try to find an older batch. You will thank me later. Uh, Royal Oud is, uh, to me, one of the most wearable uh, I don't have to think when I wear this fragrance. I can wear this anywhere. Uh, you smell posh. You smell unique. You smell different. I enjoy the wear. It's not super complex. Um, some people compare it to Frederick Mall's French Lover, which has Pierre Bourdon's name, by the way, on the bottle. Um, although, interesting story to that one is Pierre Bourdon said he didn't create that perfume, most of it. That was actually created by Jean-Claude Elena, but Jean-Claude Elena then signed an exclusive agreement with Hermes, and um, Frederick Mall needed a big name to put on the bottle, so Pierre Bourdon just put on the finishing touches, and there you go. Um, bergamot, pink pepper, lemon. The pink pepper is very uh, definite. You can smell the pink pepper in the opening. And then the star of the show, to me, two things. Uh, Angelica, Galbanum, and then, of course, the cedar. So consider the Angelica and Galbanum like one, okay? Because they blend together almost instantly. And then you get this Lebanon cedar note, as they say. Um, the Lebanon cedar is not supposed to smell um, so much like wood chips like Atlas cedar does, okay? So Lebanon cedar... Uh, you definitely get this cedar smell. In fact, some people go so far as to say that this should be called royal cedar instead of royal oud. Um, and I understand what they're saying because there is an oud note, there's a musk note, and it's actually a pretty big musk note, to be honest with you. Um, Creed was really onto something when they were using these musk notes in 2010, as you'll see later in the video and 2011 with Royal Oud. Big musk note, um, and then I can smell it from here. It is absolutely beautiful. I love this fragrance. Um, and then finally, you get um, sandalwood, that very uh, smooth, creamy sandalwood that Creed is so known for. So you get the cedar sandalwood combo, and that's like a Creed you know, patent, if you will. It also lists the note of oud. Oud is in the name, but it's probably the 
uh, easiest to wear oud fragrance you could ever buy. Uh, it's not like the night. It's not like wearing a Bortnikoff or an Aries Ladore. You don't get this real oud accord. Um, you you just get this, you know, uh, synthesized, um, you know, embellished oud. That's the best way I can put it. It's an embellished oud. Uh, made for Western noses, made for someone that doesn't want to sit through 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, an hour of um, challenging times, like most real oud fragrances have. They just want to go, bam, right into something beautiful, right into something that's not challenging, easy to wear, pleasing to most Western noses. This is your fragrance. Uh, great starter niche fragrance. Very masculine to my nose, although it does, uh, it is a unisex fragrance. Anyone can wear this. I think this would smell amazing on a woman, but I just consider it more masculine leaning traditionally, okay? Um, so that's my take. I've worn it in the winter. I've worn it in the summer. I've worn it all year round. It works. It would be a great signature scent. This could be a signature scent for me. Um... And up until just this year, Julian Raskinet did not get credit for this perfume. That's why I said this perfumer's portfolio video is almost made for these two guys. Because for the longest time, Fragrantica, Parfumo, Base Notes, they listed Olivier and Erwin Creed as the perfumers. And Julian Raskinet is the perfumer. Uh, and about a year ago, you, he actually posted something on his Instagram saying, I made Royal Oud. So there was probably some sort of um, non-compete disclosure agreement or, or um, you know, something like that. Maybe not a non-compete. That's not probably the right word. Non-disclosure uh, non agreement where he couldn't say anything for 10 years. That's my guess. Because also around this time is when words started coming out of what Jean Christophe Hero made, uh, also about a decade later. So, uh, but we'll get more into that later. So it only only this year, 2022, did he get credit for Royal Oud. So, Mr. Raskinet, I very much appreciate your creation, and you know it takes a special kind of man or woman to create something like this and get absolutely no credit for it. Imagine, imagine sitting back and knowing that you created this and people are talking about it and, and you can't say a word. Um, I would think that would have to be hard on somebody. Now, one he did get credit for immediately is this. This is Histoire de Parfum. And this is a fragrance called Rare Fidelis. Now, this is the little card that comes with it with all the rare fragrances. The bottle has this rose gold feel to it. Um, you can see the rose gold color. And that really does fit because oh, I love this fragrance too. I really like his style. You know, there is a little bit of a Middle Eastern style to the three fragrances I have from him in my collection. Um, <laughs> This is uh, probably more of a traditional oud fragrance. There's more real oud feel, although maybe they both have real oud. I, I don't know. Um, don't sue me, Creed. Don't sue me, Histoire de Parfum. I'm not saying there is or is not real oud in here. I say that to my nose. This feels like there's more real oud in it than royal oud. Um, this has a note of Laotian oud which you do get a little bit of a stink in the opening. It's definitely there. It's definitely animalic. Um, and, but what's amazing with this is there's this beautifully executed note of coffee that you get in this fragrance. So you get coffee, one of the best coffee fragrances of all time, in my opinion. Um, my two, some of my favorite coffee fragrances are this, and um, Inside Man by Trussardi, which is long discontinued. That's a Nathalie Lorson creation. Uh, this is saffron, Guatemala coffee, cardamom, and cumin in the top. And the cumin is evident here. So it's cumin and Laotian oud with coffee. But it's a beast. 
it lasts forever as well. And then you get this Rose Absolute in Raspberry, which you will see he will use that Raspberry Note again in a Frederick Mall um, creation. And then Patchouli, Amber, and Laotian Oud in the bass. But what it creates is this very, um, very posh, very, um, very well made. Um, some people actually compare this and the next fragrance we're going to talk about, but I don't think there's very much comparison to my nose. It's the same perfumer, but other than that, I think they are fragrances that go their own way, do their own thing. Um, the next one I'm going to show you does not have the coffee note in it. So this came out in 2015, and this is Rare Fidelis. This is one of my favorite from the house of Histoires de Parfum. Um, and I've got a couple of these. I love these little 15 ml bottles, by the way. They're perfect for somebody like me that has a large collection. You don't always need a 100 ml bottle. Um, so that is Rare Fidelis. And then the last one, I only have a decant because it's a very expensive fragrance. Um, not as expensive as The Night, but very expensive either way. It's called The Moon. Frederick Mall's The Moon. And this came out in 2019, so a couple years back. And this also uses this raspberry note that he created for Rare Fidelis. Uh, and saffron. So raspberry saffron will, will remind you of... Fidelis. It also has oud. Uh, I don't know what type of oud. To me, the oud feels different. To me, the um, there's no coffee note here. Instead, what he did is he replaced it with a note of lychee. And there's only a couple fragrances that use that lychee note well. One is this, the moon. Um, one is a fragrance called Zonka by um, um, L'Artisan Parfumeur. Uh, and so this has two fruity notes in it. It has raspberry and it has red currant. Um, not black currant, red currant. This red berry-like feel. And then it has frankincense and Turkish rose. It's a beautiful fragrance and it leaves a indelible impression in your mind. I mean, when when I smell this fragrance, I'm instantly transported back to the last time I wear it. It's that strong of a scent association. Um, this is very close to my favorite uh, Frederick Mall Desert Gem. I think Promise is my favorite. But if I had to own one other full bottle, it would be the Moon. They're just so expensive, you know. And when you have, um, you know, when you have a decant like this. You don't always need to go spend $1,500 on a full bottle. I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not necessary. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll live off of this decant, you know, I'll, I'll be okay. And um, I'll enjoy this. And uh, it, 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 it gives off a, um, almost like a raspberry fruity hookah type smell. And, um, I, I really love Julian Raskinet's work, but I didn't like Enclave, um, and I haven't tried a lot of his other new stuff like uh, the Costume National creations and stuff like that, but um, that's, one, that's one person who truly deserves this, um, this, this video, honoring his creations. The second one, I only have two uh, from Jean-Christophe Harreau. And I don't, there's no breakdown on him. There's nothing to read on him. Uh, but I believe he is also a Pierre Bourdon disciple. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he is also a Pierre Bourdon disciple. And what's so interesting about him is in his most famous creation, which I'm going to do last, um, he uses the note of pineapple. And... There, if you go back through Pierre Bourdon's creations in the last 10 years of his working life, let's say, you'll notice that pineapple comes up over and over again. Pierre Bourdon was using pineapple in very unique ways. I think it's in um, Smalto's Full Choke. Um, I think it's in a couple other fragrances that he did, uh, one of which I don't think I have, but um, he... Uh, was obviously experimenting with this note. Now, if you say pineapple, people instantly think of this last fragrance we're going to talk about. I'm going to work backwards in time from him because I want to save the, the final one for last. Um, 
He Now, by the way, Jean-Christophe Hereau has done other fragrances that I don't have and have never smelled. Like he did Lagerfeld, uh, Karl Lagerfeld Pour Homme from 2014. He did a lot of fragrances for Thierry Mugler's um, Excep Exceptions um, collection, like the niche version of Thierry Mugler stuff, which I've never smelled any of that stuff. Um, he did Valentino Uomo Born in Roma Coral Fantasy. I don't know anything about that. Uh, he did um, Amazing Green for Comme de Garçon, and he did Spice Bomb Infrared, which I'm not really a fan of. Um, but the one that he did that I really like and doesn't get very much talk, actually, uh, now, that I, now that I think about it, is this. And I only have a decant, but this is a fragrance by Dolce & Gabbana, and it's called The One Mysterious Night. Okay, so this is Mysterious Night. This is the red bottle, okay? And um, this is just a sticker that they put on there. So if you can read Arabic, don't put so much emphasis on what that says. Um, it, it It's just a sticker they stuck on there uh, that says Exclusive Edition. They probably didn't have one that said Mysterious Night, but this is Mysterious Night in the red bottle. They also have Royal Night and all that stuff. Mysterious Night is the one that I like. Um, this is a... Middle Eastern exclusive. So again, you can kind of see the DNA. You can also see the DNA um, from Julian Raskinet in, in play here, uh, which is interesting to think about. If there was overlap in the teaching of um, Pierre Bourdon that made him go this route, right? This is saffron, grapefruit, rose absolute, one of the most beautiful rose fragrances, actually. Um which is amazing to think about for a Dolce & Gabbana, but I love the rose in this fragrance. Um, Oud, which again, Oud. Um, Clary Sage, Labdanum, Precious Woods. Oh, I hate that. Probably some Cashmoran or something. Amber and Tonka. And um, it lasts forever. It's a beast. Actually, everything we've talked about, even for a Creed, uh, Royal Oud lasts forever as well. For a creed, great performance. Most creeds don't get the performance Royal Oud gets. Um, so, great performance, definitely full bottle worthy. You have to like Rose. If you hate Rose, this is going to make you fall out of your chair. You're going to hate it. Uh, but it's like a Middle Eastern take on Rose, and it's gorgeous. Uh, it came out in 2018, um, and this is... I used to think this was the only thing I had in my collection from John Christophe Hero before... This dropped, which was news of him doing Aventus. Now, this is a 2014 bottle. If you are big into the batch code game, you can see it right there. 14M01. And uh, you can see how much I've used. This is this is my dent. That's that's it. That's all that's left. I've used this entire thing. Yes, I like Aventus. Yes, I'm a fragrance head that likes Aventus. Uh, um, I have a 2015 bottle. I have a 2016 bottle. I have a 2017 bottle. And then I learned my lesson. That's it. No more past 2017. Do not go past 2017. You will be disappointed. Trust me. I owned a flacone of a 2018 version of Aventus. And I was very disappointed. Because they've been playing with the reformulations on this. I, I, I am almost 1,000% that Aventus has been reformulated over the years. Um, my, my, this nose says that it has. And, but, but this, this uh, gives off this fruity. It's, it's basically what, what's interesting about this, and most people don't realize this, this is a chifre. This is a fruity Shifra fragrance. So you could put this in the same category, maybe not the same league, but the same category as Mitsuko. Mitsuko uses peach. Aventus uses pineapple and apple. Pineapple and apple and black currant. Three fruits. Um, and there used to be a note in the old note breakdown. I see the new note breakdown now has changed over the years. There used to be a note of Turkish rose. 
There's no longer a listing of rows in the breakdown of Aventus. Um, it's interesting because, you know, looking at the note breakdown, you can kind of see some of the changes. Now, one thing that was said, and again, go read the Ghost Perfumer if you want more information on stuff like this. Um, but there was a revolutionary new musk that came out. And again, that's why I said the musk in Creed's Royal Oud from 2011 is very important because this is 2010 and there is a new musk that came out that revolutionized everything, that Creed thought it would revolutionize everything. And it did. It did actually revolutionize everything. Um, and just in case those of you Creed heads want to see, yes, it is white inside. Um, and this new musk apparently was going to be very hard for people to copy for whatever reason. I'm not really in on the details of it, but that's what it came down to. Um, there is oak moss in the base. It's a chifra. There is a little bit of vanilla, so it has some sweetness. It's so modern, you know. Someone once said it's like a modern mansion versus an old castle. The modern mansion has, you know, glass wall, glass windows, and, you know, it has the nice cuts on, you know, the... Um, big sloping roof and it's it's very modern and it's electronic you can control everything from your phone whereas a shifra like mitsuko is maybe an old vintage castle um but they're both shifras you know they're both they both get the job done they're both expensive houses um uh, and aventus is that very modern feel and it caught on like wildfire i mean no fragrance has uh, made the splash in the fragrance industry like Aventus has. And for a niche fragrance, most of the ones that make a splash are things like Sauvage, are things like Blue de Chanel, you know, are things that someone can go to Macy's and just try. Very few people could go buy a $500 bottle of Creed Aventus, right? And so for whatever reason, it just caught on. And this is what allowed Creed to sell their brand to BlackRock for a billion dollars. It's Aventus. Aventus is their hit. Um, without a hit, very few people would be out there buying Bois de Portugal, um, Royal Oud, um, you know, those kind of fragrances from the past. Even Green Irish Tweed didn't bring Creed to the level of Aventus. Uh, and so hate it, love it, Jean Christophe Hero deserves credit for creating this. And imagine, he had to sit on his hands for 12 years almost. 12 years he had to sit on his hands while uh, this was, you know, talked about, debated, batch variations debated, um, on and on and on and on and on. Uh, and so, this is. Um, I like this fragrance. I find it easy to wear in the spring and the summer, but I hate Aventus Cologne. I hate Viking Cologne. I hate the colognes, um, but I will wear this in spring and summer, and it keeps my attention. It's, it's, I think it's a good fragrance. People hate it because of the popularity that it's gotten on. You know, it's almost like hating Tom Brady for winning six Super Bowls, seven, or I don't even know how many he has, but, um, you know, they call this the king. To me, this is not the king. Koros is the king. Uh, this is a very well done, modern, fruity chifra that uh, is easy to wear and crowd pleasing. And, 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 you know, if you care about compliments, the older batches used to be compliment pullers. I don't know about the new batches. The 2018 batch that I bought was so bad that I vowed never to buy a new Creed, ever. And I'm sticking to that. Until Creed makes me whole for that awful flacone that I paid retail for, I refuse to ever buy another Creed. Um, new. I bought old Creeds. I bought an old bottle of Venezia from Enchante. Uh, that's different. I'm okay with that. Uh, but new Creeds? Never. Never, ever, ever will I buy another Creed um, because I feel like they have um, 
taking it a, t a step too far in their pursuit of monetary, you know, desires. It's not about the juice anymore, and I'm 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 out at that point. That's it. I still think my 2014 bottle is good. My 2015 bottle is good. 16 good. 17 is good. Um, but there came to a point where you could you could definitely tell the reformulations. And I think it's insane that these bottles, a 2011 batch or a 2010 batch was on eBay for $50,000 the other day. Rich Mitch showed me. Um, but I've seen regularly 2011 batch, five grand. Uh, that's insane. I mean, that's, that's, that is, I, I understand if you're a billionaire or something and money means nothing to you, you want to smell something that isn't produced anymore. It's supply and demand, but do not pay. Do not pay huge money for just, just count it as something that happened in the past and, and, and that's it. You know, it's good, but it's not five, 10 grand good. Trust me. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to do this video uh, to highlight these two gentlemen who constantly get um, not just overlooked, but they were literally just acted like they didn't exist. Like they created this fragrance and then they they just, boom, it was Olivier Creed and it was Erwin Creed who got the, um, who got the uh, limelight. And that bothers me. So for Jean-Christophe Harreau, and for Julian Raskinet, uh, I, I appreciate your creations. You deserve the spotlight. These are fantastic. I'm glad you're now getting the recognition that you deserve. If you don't like Creed, I'm sorry you had to put up with this video. Uh, but I, I have been a Creed fan in the past. And I'm just not happy with where the house is going now. But uh, that doesn't change the fact that I like my older bottles. I just won't buy any new ones. So... Uh, thank you for watching this version of Perfumer's Portfolio. And if there are other fragrances that these perfumers created that you think I should try, please let me know. I love seeing your faces in the comments. I love interacting with you guys. I learn more from you than you do from me. I say that all the time, but it's damn true. And um, a like and a subscription is appreciated, but it's not necessary. If you don't feel like it, you obviously don't have to. Um, I just view this as I'm doing it for the love of perfume. All of these I paid for with my own money. Uh, you know, Ashton recently did a video on uh, free bottles in the community. And Ashton has 250,000 subscribers. So if Ashton is talking about stuff like that from GenSense, that means that even though rich people like Rich Mitch and I and, and Eugene are smaller channels, uh, well, Eugene's not small like Rich Mitch and I, but um, you get the point. Rich Mitch and I are still under a thousand subscribers as of this point. And, you know, we're a smaller channel, but the message that we're giving about the issue with the fragrance ecosystem, the free bottle ecosystem, I paid for this with my own money. If Roja sent this to me and I talked about it and went, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. You should go spend $500 on this. Uh, there's a problem with that, and Ashton talked about that pro that exact problem, how if anyone says anything bad, they're cut off from the free bottle list, which I don't care. I have my own bottles. I don't need your free bottles. I, I, I'll buy the fragrance with my own money, and so I am the uh, probably the worst nightmare of these brands because I have the ability to say whatever I want. I'm not bound to your free bottle uh, your free bottle chain where if I say something wrong, I don't get the next one. I don't need it. Uh, or I'll do a review off of a decant. You know, that's always an option. Get a, get a little five or, or, you know, even a two ml decant if you just want to try and do a first impression and talk about it. Um, you know, so there's other ways to go about it, but I think more and more people are waking up to the fact that the free bottle train is coming to an is coming to an end for some people, and um, maybe the people who were on that train aren't happy about it. But for the people like me who see Fragcom as like this well of knowledge, and you know, it's it's about knowledge that you're talking about the juice with. Uh, it's about the knowledge that you have that you're sharing it with other people. Um, you're not doing it for your own 
monetary financial gain. You're doing it because you love fragrances. I think it's a good thing that the um, free bottle train is hopefully coming to an end or that the houses or that the, um, let's say, reviewers who are on that free bottle train are just not taken as seriously anymore. People know that you can't trust what they're going to say because you know what they're going to say before they even get the fragrance. You're going to say they love it. So that's why a like and a subscription to somebody like me, that would be my case for giving a like and a subscription to somebody like me because I'm going to say what I really think. You may not like what I think, and that's completely fine, but it should be, you know, these review channels, um, which mine is kind of turning into in a sense, or it will eventually. I plan on reviewing everything that I have at some point. Um, you know, these, uh, these review channels are um, not helpful. You're watching a commercial. I mean, you don't know you're watching a commercial, but that's really what you're watching. And so that's, that's why that would be my case for a like and a subscription to my channel. Anyways, I know I can get on a rant and it's already been 40 minutes, so we'll keep it brief. I'll cut it off here. Thank you very much for watching. I'll try to see you again tomorrow with another video. Cheers. Bye-bye.